Check this out. No, 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 not that. This right here. Crap, what a mess, and the housekeeper was just over earlier today. Back in the garage, back in the garage, back in the garage today, back in the garage. All right guys, back in the garage today, working on the KTM 1290 Super Adventure. I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step how to install a Cyclops LED lighting kit, show you a little bit before and after. But before we get started on that, let's take a look, see what's inside the kit. All right, so this is the kit specific to the KTM 1190 and 1290 uh, Adventure bikes. We do have a couple pages of instructions here. We've got the lights, and we're just gonna keep the bulbs in there right now. With the resistors, we also have some rivets. All right, before we get started today, I just wanna give a huge thank you to Spruce Goose. I'm gonna link him in the description below. Go check him out. If it weren't for him, this would not be possible. He sent me this kit, and that's how we're getting to do this install video today. So uh, now it's time to actually get to work. First thing to do is take these instructions, throw them back in the box, and move this stuff out of your way, because until we get to the bulbs, they're useless. Okay, so if we take a look at the service manual, we can see we have all these steps to go through in order to change out these bulbs. Tools you're going to need in order to complete this job. Torch head sockets, Allen sockets and or Allen wrenches, a couple of ratchets, and maybe the screwdriver adapter. You're also going to need a 1 8 inch drill bit, a drill, and a pop rivet gun. Two optional things, but things I recommend. Flashlight, torque wrench. All right, so step one is to remove the windshield. You have these four screws that you're gonna take out. They are Torx head bit. We're gonna get these removed and then we'll move on to the next step. Once you have the windshield removed, put it someplace safe, and I went ahead and set mine over here to the side with the little screws so I don't lose those later on. The next two steps are fairly straightforward. We're gonna remove the passenger seat, followed by the rider seat. You do need the key in order to get the seats off. Also remember, at least in the case of the 1290, to undo the plug underneath the seat where the, uh, where the heated seat plug is. According to the service manual, the next thing we're supposed to do is remove the crash bars. We're gonna start with the two screws back here in the center. I have no idea why, because almost every other fastener on this bike is Torx. But we do have Allens here. I believe this is a, uh, a five millimeter. We gotta get these removed. So be careful. There is a uh, there is a nut on the back of these. All right, so over on the left-hand side of the bike, the next four uh, screws we're gonna remove are these two and these two. These are the uh, clamp halves. We'll get those out and then I'll show you the next step. We are back to uh, Torx head here and it is the same size as the one you just used to remove the windshield. Now what I'm gonna do so I don't lose them is I'm just gonna thread these back in to the bottom half here for the time being until I get the, uh, the top one pulled off. With those four screws removed and the half clamps, the last thing we have is right here. And again, we're back to an Allen. Eight millimeter. One slight problem I'm running into because I have the skid plate on, that is part of the skid plate bracket that is holding the uh, crash bar on. So I think I'm gonna move over to the other side, loosen everything up there, and then see if I can get enough free play to get this crash bar totally off the bike. Okay, so it turns out it was a tight fit, but there was enough room. I just had to kind of wiggle it around a little bit there and I was able to drop it down off the side. Now we're gonna move over to the other side of the bike and do the same exact thing. Just a quick recap, I'm gonna remove these two and these two with the half clamps, and then we're gonna go back down to this bolt and drop this uh, right side crash bar.
The next step is to remove the side covers, which are these pieces on each side. So I'll show you how to do that next. According to the service manual, the first screw we're going to take out is this one right here. That is a Torx head. With the top one removed, the next one we're going to remove is this one right here. And keep in mind, you do have to do this on both sides. We have two more screws to remove. This one and this one. Now this cover should pop right off of the side, but you do need to uh, disconnect the uh, cornering light. All right, so that's what it looks like with the uh, side cover removed. You can see right here, I disconnected the cornering light. It's really, really easy to get to. Now I'm gonna move around and do the same thing on the left-hand side of the bike. Next up, we're gonna remove the tank cover that consists of this screw here, this screw here, this screw here, and then two in the same place, just on the other side of the tank. Just FYI, that front one is actually a uh, eight millimeter socket or wrench, whatever you're gonna use. The rest are Torx head. Just a real quick side note, this is where your uh, fuel sending unit is. It just sits right down here. You've got two little uh, screws you take out and the whole thing pops up out of there. Just FYI. And now finally, the last thing we need to remove in order to get to the headlights is the mask spoiler. So let's get to work on it. All right, so the first screw we need to take out is, it's gonna be tough to see, but it's this one right here. I believe that is a Torx head. We're about to find out. It is a Torx head. All right, so the next screw we're gonna take out is this one right here, also Torx. All right, so with those two screws removed, this pops right off. Be sure to undo the connection here uh, for the turn signal. Same exact procedure on this side. We're gonna get this screw out that's in here. Then we're gonna pull this one, this will pop off, and then we'll just undo the turn signal. Now that we've removed all this stuff and your bike should look about like this, maybe without the uh, top case, it's now time to remove the headlight assembly. Step one of the headlight assembly removal, you have four screws, one here, one here, one here, and one here. We need to take all four of those out. Get the first side off. Now we're gonna take that side off, both sides off. All right, over here on this side, we've got two screws we need to take out right here, and one way back in there, and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side as well. It's probably a little hard to tell on camera. I just wanna point them out again. You got right here, and then back into this little crevice, they are both the same Torx head bit that we've been using this entire time. Just FYI on that top one, I don't know if you guys can see that, there's a little collar on there, just make sure you don't drop that. Over here on this side, the collar didn't actually pop out. It may or may not, just wanted you to be aware of it. With all four of those screws removed, now we can undo the headlight. Now one thing we need to do is unplug it from the harness. It's gonna be a little tough to see. Hopefully you can see it there. Just unplug that and uh, we can finally get to work on replacing the bulbs. I feel such a sense of accomplishment because we finally got the headlight off. Now let's go grab the Cyclops parts and get them swapped. One other thing that I didn't mention earlier, if you got a piece of pasteboard, I think it's a good idea to lay your parts down on so you don't have to worry about anything getting scratched up while it's off the bike. The next step is fairly straightforward with the, uh, with the headlight facing down. We're gonna take out the low beam and the high beam and we're gonna replace them with the uh, Cyclops bulbs. Now, if you've ever replaced a headlight bulb, you know it's pretty simple. You just twist them to get them out. Now, KTM has put a twist tie on the back here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it to make it a little bit easier to get to these plugins. Now, one thing, one thing I'm gonna do here, I know this is the low beam bulb and I know these are the low beam wires, so I'm gonna take a piece of black electrical tape and wrap it around here so I don't get it confused later. All right, so we got both the uh, high beam and low beam removed. Now we're gonna pop in the uh, new ones from Cyclops. Okay, so I, I've got the new LEDs in, and it doesn't matter which one you put in high beam, which one you put in low beam, but I do want you to see, I don't know if you guys can tell, 
the emitters, so like the yellow part, you want to make sure they're pointed left and right, not up and down when you install them. This is what it looks like from behind, so I actually have the wires running down. Total side note for any of you that saw me do the uh, GPS install video, you can see where all my wiring is, uh, is just kind of bunched up right here. I've just got it zip tied in there and out of the way. All right, so the next thing we need to do is make sure these resistors fit in here. Now our goal is we want to go about three quarters of an inch behind that bulge. But before we start uh, drilling, what I am going to do is use some double stick tape. If you've got a GoPro, just take one of the uh, little sticky patches, cut it in half. We're going to test fit all this before we drill into it and find out that it doesn't fit. All right, so right now I've got the little resistors back, about three quarters of an inch or so. What we're going to do, we just got them stuck on there with double stick tape. We're going to plug everything up into the headlight and uh, see if the entire assembly goes back on without issue. All right, so we've got everything just bugged up there. Make sure the holes line up. Thad, give me a... Just All right, so the only issue is we do have a headlight failure. Now we've got a couple of options to fix this. We can either unplug the battery for 20 minutes that may cure it, or Cyclops also says run it to uh, three, four engine starts and it'll normally clear out. All right, so now that we've test fitted everything, the next thing we wanna do is get this in place, get a 1 8 inch drill bit, and we're gonna drill there and there, and then we're gonna pop rivet these things in place. All right, just FYI, there is a washer on top of this rivet. Uh, they do recommend that in the book, so we're gonna do what they say. All right, so we got the first pop rivet in there. Now we're gonna drill back here, put the next pop rivet in, and then we'll be done with this side. We got this side riveted in. Now it's time to work on this side. So we're plugged back into the main harness there. I decided to use the left-hand side as high beam, the right-hand side as low beam. It doesn't really matter. It's all male and female plugs. They only go together one way. Now we need to put all this back in and get the entire assembly bolted back on. All right, so since we're throwing that code, I've decided to go ahead and unhook the battery and uh, we're gonna leave it unhooked for about 20 minutes and see if that clears up the code and then we'll get back to reassembling the bike. Now obviously you're gonna reassemble in, op, you know, in the opposite order you took it apart. So I've already put the headlight back on that includes that bolt and remember you know, that screw back there on both sides. So this is all bolted back up already. All right, so unfortunately after 20 minutes having the battery disconnected, I am still getting the headlight failure code, but I'm gonna go ahead and start putting everything back together and we'll, we'll see what happens over the course of the next few starts and stops. And if I have to, maybe I'll swing by the dealer and have them flash it for me. All right, so everything goes back in the opposite order. These go back here. That one goes on that side, so let's get those done first. Quick note on reinstalling these, I like to use the screwdriver attachment. Do not over tighten them because they are just plastic. Next up is the mask spoiler. Just remember to plug your turn signal back in before you start popping this back on. Just a reminder on the mask spoiler, you've got one screw going here and then the other one that was kind of like down in here. I think it says like 2.8 foot pounds of torque. Just hand tighten them real snug but not over tight. All right, so we got the one on the left side, also have the one on the right side. Just watch when you're putting them on. There are a couple little plastic tabs that'll snap into place, but like I said, there's just two screws, this one and the one right up. We showed it earlier, but it's like right there. Next up is the tank cover. Remember with the tank cover, we've got this one that goes in here, we got one here, we got one back here, and then we got the two on the other side. Got the tank cover back installed. Next up are the side covers, so we'll start with the left side. First thing we want to do is make sure we plug the cornering light back in. You can see the plug right there. Get it plugged in, and then we'll get the rest of it buttoned up. All right, so I got the side cover just kind of popped into place. Next thing we're going to do is start putting the fasteners back in. Here, much like before, we're going to hit the top one, then the bottom one, and then we'll come around and get the two on the sides. All right, so after putting the left side on, you should have this screw back in, this screw back in, this one right here, and then the one kind of up inside here that's kind of tough to see, but right there. And we've got everything buttoned back up on the right hand side. We're to the home stretch. The next thing we gotta do is mount the crash bars. We do wanna start with the right side. The first thing you wanna do is kinda get it over this uh, circular piece. Now again, I have the, I have the uh, skid plate here, so mine's gonna look a little different, but we wanna put this bolt in first, but we don't wanna tighten anything. Next come the half clamps. Again, we don't want to tighten anything up. We just want to get them in place. 
Before we tighten anything up, and these are only going to get tightened up to a little over 7 foot-pounds of torque, and this one to around 18 foot-pounds of torque, we're going to move over to the other side first. Same deal, got this one just uh, sitting on here. Now the reason why this one has to go on second is because it sits in front of this one here in front of the radiator. So uh, same thing, we're going to get the, the half clamps on here, we're going to get this bolt run through here, and then eventually we'll torque everything down. The last two we have, remember these have a nut on the back, they're going to go right in through here. Again, don't want to tighten them up. All right, so once you take a look at your crash bars and realize everything is straight, you can go ahead and start tightening things down. We're looking at 18.4 foot-pounds of torque, 7.4 on these, and also the one there behind the radiator, or excuse me, right in front of the radiator. Next up, we're gonna put back on the rider seat and then the passenger seat. Quick reminder, don't forget to plug back in your uh, heated seat, assuming you have the 1290 Super Adventure. With the rider and passenger seat back on, the last thing we have left to do is reattach the windshield. All right, so I've got great news after uh, starting the bike up probably four or five times. The, the code finally went away. Headlights working awesome. I'm going to show you guys some before footage and a little bit of after footage so you can kind of compare and contrast, and then we'll come back here and wrap things up. All right, guys, so there you have it, the Cyclops LED headlight kit installed on a 2016 KTM 1290 Super Adventure. It should also work on the 1190 models. I'm really impressed by it. I haven't got to ride at night yet, but just that thing is blinding. It looks so cool, too. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed today's install video. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, I look forward to you being one. If there's something you feel like uh, you still have a question about or maybe I glossed over a little too quickly, let me know in the comment section below. And as always, I'll talk to you again soon.